Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories that are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of April. Islamabad seeks details after India seizes Pakistani boat with heroin. Pakistan Taliban test fires indigenously built missile. And International Sand Art Festival enthralls spectators in southern India. And now for all the details. The Aam Aadmi Party has joined the growing opposition protests against the Indian government's land acquisition bill. Party Supremo and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jriwal called on farmers across the country to come together against the proposed legislation. The AAP on Wednesday became the latest political party to join the growing opposition protest against the Bharatiya Janata Party government's controversial land acquisition bill. The party held a farmers' protest in capital New Delhi to launch its demonstration against the new legislation. And leading the party's attack was party supremo Arvind K. Jriwal. The Delhi chief minister said farmers were not consulted in the drafting of the bill, which would only benefit the industrialists. कि वही देश का किसान आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी और नरेंद्र मोदी की सरकार के ऊपर से पूरी तरह से विश्वास खो चुका है। एक साल के अंदर क्या हो गया कि आज किसान को लगता है कि नरेंद्र मोदी सरकार किसानों की सरकार नहीं है, नरेंद्र मोदी सरकार किसान विरोधी सरकार है। आज एक साल के बाद क्या हो गया कि किसानों को और इस देश के गरीबों को लगता है कि ये सरकार गरीबों की और किसानों की विरोधी है और ये सुपर अमीरों की सरकार है सुपर अमीरों की सरकार बनती है। The Land Acquisition Bill 2015 with nine amendments was reintroduced in the Parliament on Monday. The bill proposed by the government is meant to simplify land acquisition for major projects. Prime Minister Modi had in December last year issued an executive order to exempt projects in defence, rural electrification, rural housing and industrial corridors from provisions of the 2013 law requiring 80% of affected landowners to agree to a deal. It has however been widely criticised for affecting the farmers. The Tehreek Taliban Pakistan has claimed to have successfully test fired an indigenously built missile. This comes at a time when the Pakistan army said it has eliminated the combat capabilities of the Taliban with its ongoing military operation. In an amateur video purportedly posted on the internet by the Pakistan Taliban, the militia has claimed that it has successfully test fired a missile. The video shows the missile named Omar-1 being assembled in parts before it is launched. Taliban spokesperson Muhammad Khurasani said the missile was developed by the insurgents' own engineering team. It is designed to be assembled and disassembled easily in accordance to the situation. The development comes at a time when the Pakistan army is nearing to completing one year of Operation Zarbe Azb against the Taliban in its lawless tribal areas around Waziristan. The army claims that it has killed around 2,000 militants since June last year when the operation was launched. It also said that the operation had severely damaged the infrastructure of the militants and they were incapable of carrying out terror attacks. Former Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajpaksa has refused to appear before an anti-corruption commission regarding a bribery case. The commission had on Monday summoned Rajpaksa and his brother Gotavaya, who is also a former defence secretary in a case for allegedly inducing one of his opponents in the recent elections. The ex-president is facing a number of corruption and misappropriation of fund charges during his two terms. Rajpaksa has however rejected all cases. His supporters also held a demonstration in capital Colombo against what they claimed was the government's conspiracy against Rajapaksa. Pakistan on Wednesday saw details from India about the arrest of its boatmen. Indian authorities had confiscated a Pakistani boat with contraband considered to be one of the largest ever heroin seizure in the country. Security agencies say the shipment was likely part of a trafficking operation from Afghanistan and Pakistan. A report. 
India's Navy and Coast Guard uncovered 200 kilograms of heroin worth $15 million aboard a boat of the western province of Gujarat. The suspected Pakistani boat with eight crew members was seized for further investigation. Also recovered were satellite phones and GPS devices that officials said indicated narcotics trafficking. But officials refused to say if the heroin was meant to be delivered in India. The initial investigations on board this ship, that is Indian Coast Guard ship Sangram, have led to recovery of 232 packets of narcotics suspected to be heroin. Additionally, satellite communication sets, global positioning systems, which could have been used for transshipment of the contraband, have also been apprehended. India's Narcotics Control Bureau works with the Indian military to check drug infiltration. It claims that shipments like this flow into India from Afghanistan via Pakistan. India is particularly sensitive to suspected smuggling near the coast. In 2008, militants who reached shore from a trading ship launched deadly attacks at several sites in Mumbai. In January, Indian forces intercepted a Pakistani fishing boat reportedly carrying explosives. The Narcotics Bureau also said smugglers and militant organizations are linked. Pakistan. Uh, Establishment, in fact, involved in these uh, type of activities for a very long time. It is working on a two-pronged strategy to bleed India. One is sending across the militants and the other one is, you know, it is also involved in drug running and gun running business. India's proximity to narcotics production centers in Afghanistan and Pakistan heighten drug trafficking concerns. Experts feel security agencies of the affected countries need to tackle the problem at the source of cultivation, trafficking and use. Avneet Rora for South Asia Newsline in New Delhi. Pakistan on Wednesday executed four death row convicts, taking the number of the total capital punishments carried out in the country to 95 since December last year. All the four whose mercy pleas were rejected by the president were hanged in eastern Punjab province. Fifteen death row convicts were also sent to gallows by Pakistani authorities on Tuesday. Pakistan, which had a nearly eight-year self-imposed moratorium on capital punishments, had revoked it following the Peshawar Army School attack. Various rights groups and international organizations, including the UN, have urged Pakistan to end the executions and restore the suspension. There are an estimated 8,000 people on death row languished in various jails across Pakistan. The Afghan Taliban on Wednesday said its annual spring-summer offensive against the government will begin from Friday. The insurgents, who have vowed to carry out nationwide attacks in the coming days, have also threatened foreigners to leave Afghanistan or they will be targeted. The announcement of the spring-summer offensive comes at a time when the Ashraf Ghani government in Kabul has claimed that they were close to attaining peace with the militants. The Taliban, which controlled the war-torn nation under a strict Islamic rule for nearly a decade, was ousted in 2001 following the NATO troops invasion. The hardline Islamists, who have rejected the democratically elected government in Afghanistan, have been making steady progress in gaining grounds following the drawdown of NATO forces. It was a moment to reckon as more than a hundred couples rang the wedding bells together. Take a look at how this mass ceremony unfolded. As many as 150 couples exchanged their wedding vows at a mass marriage ceremony in central Bhopal. The event on Tuesday took place to mark the Hindu festival occasion of Akshay Tritya, considered auspicious for marriage-related rituals. The grand ceremony was organized by a social organization with an aim to create awareness against dowry system. The brides-to-be were delighted at the initiative. हमको बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है कि हम अपने घर वालों की बचत कर रहे हैं और यहां से हमको इतना कुछ मिल रहा है और इतनी अच्छी शिक्षा दी है सर लोगों ने हमको यहां पर और सब चीज अच्छे से हो रहा है जहां तक हमको ठीक लगा बस ठीक है द इवेंट नॉट ओनली रिड्यूस द वेडिंग एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ द फैमिलीज बट आल्सो गेव अ मेमोरेबल सेंड ऑफ टू द ब्राइड्स इट वाज अ परफेक्ट एमाल्गेमेशन ऑफ सन सैंड एंड आर्ट India's southern coast got a visual treat as it hosted acclaimed artists who left visitors spellbound with their fascinating sculptures.
The mighty Alapuzha beach in southern Kerala came alive with mesmerizing sand creations adding to the picturesque delight of the hotspot. The coastal region is seeing both domestic and foreign artists thronging its sand with gusto. The city is hosting the first international sand art festival of the province to provide an opportunity for art lovers and beachgoers to get a glimpse of the enthralling sculptures. Many said the nine-day event will highlight the cultural heritage of the state apart from boosting tourism in Kerala, popularly known as God's own country. It's a great uh, initiation. Uh, hopefully, it will grow much more. I'm, I could see there are many people will be coming to Co uh, Alapi and see this project. Uh, thousands, uh, thousands of people could come and visit th this uh, beach experience. The event made Kerala the second state after Odisha to host the International Sand Art Festival of such grandiosity. Apart from the participation of 10 teams in the competition, the festival also includes painting exhibitions, sand art workshops, food stalls, consumer exhibitions and daily entertainment program. She is known to break the stereotypes. After delving into unexplored territories, one of Bollywood's most versatile actors tries a hand at yet another, but in a different light. Take a look at how she's making a mark. We've had Bollywood actors play characters suffering from incurable medical conditions. But Kalki Kochlin's latest on-screen avatar is unlike any other Bollywood protagonist. Margarita with a straw which opened last weekend is getting rave reviews for exploring the emotional and sexual psyche of a girl suffering from cerebral palsy. Bollywood's love to support unique subjects continues with this one too. Actors Huma Qureshi, Vidya Balan, Dia Mirza, Sri Devi, along with filmmakers Boni Kapoor, R. Balki, Gauri Shinde, Siddharth Roy Kapoor attended a special screening of the film. Director Shanali Bose and co-actor Sayani Gupta also joined Kochlin. I'm very, very excited and it's a very brave film. And uh, yeah, so just here to be, I don't know, inspired, I guess. I'm very excited. Uh, she's unbelievable in the trailer. Really looking forward to the film. And of course, Kalki is a superb actress. And whatever I saw from the trailer was actually really tear jerk. I'm extremely happy that this film has been made. I think it's a subject that uh, no filmmaker in India has even considered before. Actress Radha Kapoor and filmmakers Anurag Kashyap and Rajkumar Hirani, alongside star couple Amir Khan and Kiran Rao, also came to support the team at another do. Margarita with a Straw has already been screened at the 2014 Toronto International Film Festival, BFI London Film Festival and the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Kochlin said the film portrays a simple life story rather than glorifying disability or sexuality. She added that playing such a character was a challenge. It was uh, scary uh, that would I still be, would I be able to pull this off? Um, uh, you can't guarantee if you're going to be able to do something like this until you try it. So uh, going into an unknown territory is scary, but, uh, uh, but I'm, I, I enjoyed the process and I learned a lot as an actor, as a person as well. Margarita with a straw revolves around a rebellious young woman, Leila Kapoor, who is suffering from cerebral palsy. In order to lead a normal and lively life, Leila leaves her home in India to study in New York and unexpectedly falls in love with a young female activist. What follows are her struggles as she embarks on an exhilarating journey of self-discovery. The film also stars Revati, Sayani Gupta and Kuljeet Singh. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Islamabad seeks details after India seizes Pakistani boat with heroin. Pakistan Taliban test fires indigenously built missile. And International Sand Art Festival enthralled spectators in southern India. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianews9.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianews9 and follow us on Twitter at SAsianews9.
And that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.